The Stuart Models No. 9 Horizontal Steam Engine Part 5 and an orthodox way of machining a small amount off the slide valve at each end to correct the valve timing. As with any other type of engine, valve timing has to be correct. If it's not correct, the engine will still run but will not achieve its full potential. This is the number 9 running very slowly using compressed air. The reason it is so jerky is because the piston and bore are quite large, yet the flywheel for the size of the engine is a bit on the small side. The governor is not really functional, it just looks nice. The mechanism does actually work, it just needs adjustment. For the job I'm about to do, I need to disconnect the linkage from the governor arm. I cannot remove the valve chest with that in the way. And now it's out of the way, it's a simple job to just remove the nuts and remove the valve chest. Before I do that, once again in this clip I'm trying to illustrate the fact that air is admitted to the piston after the crank has gone over top dead centre. As I've mentioned many times, this is not right. Steam or compressed air should be admitted to the piston just before it goes over top dead centre. In model steam engines I often see the opposite, especially on models fitted with small flywheels. By admitting the steam or air after top dead centre, the engine's more likely to run slower. In this clip I'm unscrewing the valve rod from the drive block that moves the valve. While on the subject of valves, here it is. This is a standard slide valve that admits and exhausts the steam or air from the cylinder. This engine has been very well made by an experienced model engineer. To remove the slide valve I didn't really need to take off the steam chest but I wanted to have a close look at it and the good news is it's fine. I've scribed a line on the valve very close to the edge and this is how much metal I need to remove but at both ends. The valve seems to be accurately made but it's just a little bit too long for the arrangement of the engine. I need to remove about a 32nd of an inch off each end of the valve, and that, if you're interested, is 31 and a quarter thou. I could do this with a standard file, but the only files I have in my workshop built onto the house are needle files, and I really think my lifespan isn't long enough to do it this way. I know I'll clean up the port face while I think about the best way to do the job. I don't want to go into the main workshop and heat it up because it's raining and it's cold, I'm going to find a way to do the job in this workshop. In my small workshop I have a very small milling machine. It's a Proxon milling machine and it's called an MF70 and it's a bit feeble to be honest, I don't use it very much. Note to self, bring the box of Proxon milling cutters down to this workshop instead of leaving them in the main workshop. I'm going to have to improvise. I'm going to show three ways to do this job. The first one is to fit a die grinder into the chuck of the machine and in this magnified image you can see that I need to grind down to the line that I've scribed on the valve. This is going to take forever. Note to self once again, bring a sensible file down to the workshop that's built onto the house because I could have filed this in no time at all with a normal file but not with a needle file and certainly not with this thing, it's just going to take too long. After this first very fine cut, I thought it would take a heavier cut, and this didn't really work. I didn't like the sound the milling machine was making and everything was getting hot. I persevered for a while, but it was just going to take too long. Not an ideal method. Here's method number two. Why not use a larger cutter? At this stage, I have to say, for this kind of a job, you definitely need to wear eye protection. At this speed, if the disc shatters, it could be a problem. But in actual fact, the disc didn't shatter, nor did it cut the metal very well. Here I'm taking quite a deep cut, but all that's happening is the cutting disc is moving out of the way. It's really not designed to do this sort of a job. As well as that, the milling machine was getting a bit hot. To allow the milling machine's motor to cool down, I thought it would be a good idea to make a cup of tea. And yes, I know it would have been much easier to take this up into the main workshop, clamp it in the milling machine and get on with it, but as I said earlier, for various reasons, I want to try a different method. I'm going to approach this problem from a different angle. I mounted the slide valve in the machine vise, 
90 degrees from where you see it here. And I'm using a drum sander, which makes short work of removing the metal. It may not be good engineering practice, but I once saw a video where a man with a big drum sander was rounding the ends of coupling rods on full-size locomotives. So, if it's good enough for the LMS, it's good enough for me. I destroyed one sanding drum and just changed it to another one. This is a new sanding drum and it's a bit sharper. I've machined one end of the valve to the depth that I require it, now I'm machining the other end. And don't forget I'm taking one thirty-second of an inch off both sides, because the valve still needs to be the same shape at both ends. Just using my calibrated eye, I remove metal until both of the ends of the valves look the same. Then I cleaned up the valve on a piece of 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper and some WD-40 as a lubricant so that the sandpaper cuts better. Before reassembling the engine I'm just making sure that the valve travels equidistantly over the ports. And yes, it's much better. If this was a larger engine with a larger flywheel I would have removed more metal from each end of the slide valve, but I think the amount that I've taken off is about right. The valve opens the port just as the engine reaches top dead centre. And it does this at both ends. What I need to do now is reassemble the engine and see what it sounds like. I should have put a trumpet fanfare here. As you can clearly hear, the beats of the engine are far better than they were before I shortened the valve. It's not as jerky and it's much better at slow running. I think it's time to give the engine a thorough oiling. I was going to save this job until the engine had bedded in a bit more, but it should be fine. The lubricating oil is starting to run clear in more parts of the engine. It's still a little bit black around the connecting rod. The main thing is obvious, the engine's beats are far more even. It will get better as the engine runs in. Here's a flashback to what it was like before I shortened the valve. And now running at a higher speed it is completely different. And that is it for this episode, I can say no more. Other than of course, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.